What's up? This is Naked Eli, the Mostly Unclothed Gamer. Today we have a treat for competitive types out there. This is the EGL tournament. They had three Halo 4 matches. The first ever pro versus pro gameplay on Haven in the latest build. This guy is going to start off with a region, DMR, and his own custom abilities and sets that are far beyond the E3 build where we saw the last American pro versus pro gameplay. So here we're in Europe. These guys are playing head-to-head -head on monitors, no lag, no excuses, and this is some really solid gameplay. Starting off with the Ogre Twitch right there, this guy's going to test out the regen, says hey it looks pretty, I like it. Right here getting some great team shot on the red guy through the middle right there. You notice that four blue guys shooting at one red guy, that red guy is going to go down super fast. And I actually remember hanging out with Elamite at E3 and he said basically to win Halo games all you need to do is shoot people at the same time. That's literally it, the team that team shoots and gets more of a team shot off shooting together as opposed to one versus one all around the map, that's the team that's going to win. Right here we see that this blue is going on the flank while the rest of his teammates are in the middle. He's going to clean up one, but the other red is going to charge him and take him out. Now this is my first time commentating over pro gameplay in Halo 4. Sorry, I don't know the callouts because this is so new. This guy up here is going to jump into the red. We have three guys versus one blue. Who do you think is going to win? It's very simple. He just ran over the sticky detonator right there. Why in the world would you do that? Now that right here he has teammates supporting him and even though he was weak, he should not have poked out while he knew he was the only one taking shots from that guy. So even though I'm not a pro player, I can still in hindsight 2020 look back, analyze these pros decisions and see what works for them, what doesn't, what might have been smarter and better to do so that when you pick up the game you know what decisions to make right there he throws a grenade very silly should have activated that regen a lot earlier we noticed that the regen is weaker in halo 4 than in halo 3 where you needed at least two guys shooting at you with a br to take you out while you're in the regen now we notice also that a lot of these guys are using the DMR. They're really not giving the BR a chance. That guy looks like he has a BR. You saw the three shot spread coming at his face and the DMR just show, goes to show that that won. Also though, this DMR had the upper height advantage. He was using the ramp very well. Shouldn't have jumped out right there, right? This guy's just hanging back, waiting for the easy kill and he just gave it to him. He could have easily sat at the wall and peek shoot with his teammate. Right here he spawns down low, gonna try and get up top. Aerial advantage is always important because that gives you the ability to shoot grenades wherever you want. And now I guess we're on board with the red team which is down by three kills. This is actually a mistake that I made in pretty much all of my previous Halo 4 commentaries is that I thought that when you get like that plus 15 for an assassination or plus 5 for an assist that that would actually go towards the overall score on the leaderboard but that's not true. Each kill is 10 points no matter what. It only counts once per kill so even if you get a double kill it doesn't add like multiple points those are points that go towards your ordinance and points that go towards your ranking up after the game so all in all you don't have to worry that like a multi kill is going to be the deciding factor for the in game points now right here this guy has an ordinance ready he goes down and we notice that he still has the ordinance it doesn't disappear if you die and you can still continue to rank up points as you're going through he has Promethean Vision but he doesn't use it at all gets taken out top mid he still has that ordinance drop so even after two deaths still has the choice he's completely free right here and he could have activated this to grab the scatter shot on the left the uh, what is that the sticky detonator on the bottom and the overshield on the right right here picks up a clean double kill this would be a perfect time to grab OV while you're weak and then get that instant overshield which does not have an invincibility factor anymore like it does in previous Halo games but still double shield so what does he decide to do? He goes out into the open and then unleashes the overshield. That's really silly. Now it's in a dangerous spot. His enemies could have easily just pushed up on him and taken that and easily cleaned him up on their way over to it since there were multiple of them. He's trying to do a one versus three. That's a terrible idea. Oh, I guess uh, two versus three. Still a bad idea. And he gets taken out. I noticed that the power-ups, you feel like you should be able to take on their whole team, whether it's with a damage boost, speed boost, or an overshield. But honestly, you only have a slight advantage in a 1v1 and you're definitely at a disadvantage in a 1v2 right here the score is 320 now 330 to 310 close game only a two kill game blackjack here we're moving on board with him gets the kill and he gets a comeback kill which means he was dying a lot at least three times before he got that kill now he just requested something out in the middle of the map. That's a terrible idea. It's an overshield. He has no idea where it is. And here he can finally jump up. He's lucky that he gets it. And look at this really silly mistake. He is about to fall off the map and he does. His jetpack did not save him. These are not the mega jetpacks that we saw in Halo Reach. 
definitely not super overpowered, although I think, honestly, Jetpack would be ridiculously useful on this map. Great cross-map shots there. Um, basically, if you're in the middle, you can use all those covers. There's like four corners, and you can get up on those corners and shoot from any angle, and you'd be very hard to see, just like this. He's up in the corner. Terrible shots, um, and actually he was getting a 1v2 right there. So remember, just try and team shoot as much as possible. But right here, like you see that little cover point on the left? He could easily sit there, jump up, jetpack, drop down, maybe go up to the top. I don't know if there's a soft kill zone up there or anything. But also, yeah, just like that, jetpacking over the map. Here he's getting great flank shots when all of his team's on the right. He comes from the left, totally unexpected to the red team. Blue team starting to pull away. It is, what, 460 to 380. It's first to 600 to end the game. We already see, you can see on the timer on YouTube, I'm sure, that this is a relatively short game, very fast-paced, unlike the Adrift and Solace games that were also seen at this tournament. It was only three games on those three maps, and I was very disappointed, I gotta say, in Adrift and Solace. They were very slow-paced. They didn't even end at 600 because the time ran out. I'm not sure if it was because the players were unfamiliar with the maps or if they're just really slow game types, right? there another disadvantage of being bottom mid is that multiple angles multiple enemies could take you out so easily you have very few degrees of freedom for escape and they have a lot of degrees of freedom to come in and just destroy you from multiple angles right here is teammates weak so he's trying to keep him alive throwing grenades and looks like the guy is right around the corner he's pushing in misses that last shot look at these shots right here on the death screen one two three four five beautiful shots from whoever it was that killed him. Now we're on board with Chalky. Notice the colors are all messed up, right? This is the red team, but it's still a blue color. And it says he's on Uprising, but Uprising's supposed to be blue in the top right. So I have no idea what they're doing with their colors. But anyways, still a solid game. Right here, he could be looking through those cracks. Cleans up a kill, has another ordinance. Uh, looks like he has grenades on the left. The um, shot on the sticky detonator right here, but he puts it down when he's in battle. These pros honestly have no idea how to use ordnance drops. I know they're new, but use them when you're safe, and that guy's going to end in defeat. So that's it for the Haven commentary. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want me to cover a drift and solace, let me know in the comments. This is Naked Eli. Thumbs up the video, subscribe for more, and thank you so much for watching.